Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. December 3rd, 2024. Let's get into it. I'm gonna hit the most outrageous story right up front. Right up front, I tell you what. My disdain for Democrats just keeps escalating. Biden is going to send Africa a billion dollars. Let that sink in. Now, I'm going to show you a video right up front. This is what North Carolina looks like right now. And where to even begin? There's just so much hurricane damage, um, literally everywhere you look. Uh, I got a, a message on X from a woman named Sarah. I want to show you. It says, hi, I'm in Swannanoa, North Carolina, one of the hardest hit towns. We lost our home due to the hurricane. We're getting barely any help. Nice to meet you. I met Sarah outside the trailer she's living in with her husband, two kids, two cats, and two dogs. <laughs> like almost everyone here, their home was destroyed and condemned and they also lost their cars and their jobs. Everybody that I've talked to says they're getting no help. Their trailer was donated by a volunteer, not FEMA, and they have to pay for their own porta potty. I had to rent this so that we would be, even be able to use the bathroom. So you have to pay for that yourself? Yes, yeah, it's $130 a month to, to rent one. Sarah's one hope was U.S. Small Business Administration disaster loan. But then she got this voicemail. This is a call from the U.S. Small Business Administration about your SBA disaster loan application. Due to a lapse in congressional funds, new loan offers will be delayed until Congress provides additional funding for the disaster loan program. We understand how frustrating this delay is. What did you think when you heard that? Um, you know, I it, it's been... We, we already have it so rough, and... To not be able to get the financial and, you know, help that we need is, it's really awful. Some just down the road have it even more awful, living in tents and small RVs with no power as winter approaches and temperatures now dip into the 30s. There's times we don't get fresh meat because there's no way to keep it cold. Because you got to choose between heat in the house with a generator, especially the ones who have kids, and keeping the food cold. Winter time's coming. These folks cannot be forgot about. Just because you don't see this on TV, don't it don't just go away. This is not going to go away for a long time. We got to get those folks out of those tents and then those FEMA campers. How's it going to happen? A lot of the locals I've spoken to are particularly upset about a FEMA compound they say is much nicer than the donated trailers uh, that they are staying in. It's hard to see, uh, but, but this right here, I'm going to slow down, is the entrance to the compound. There's a lot of security. Uh, the public can't go in. We drove up onto a hill behind the compound for a better view, and you see how massive it is. A sea of government trailers. It's so organized and secure, so different from how the people we met are living here. FEMA's not connecting with the county, the county's not connecting with the state, and you got this big rat race. Volunteers like combat veteran Robbie Ammons say housing is the biggest issue, and red tape. Families left in tents and RVs because of the permitting process, he says. Next week, temperatures are going to start getting in the 30s at night. We're afraid of more hypothermia. Folks are living in the mountains, and there's probably going to be more bodies laying around if we don't start getting these. So that was a, a video on what's going on in North Carolina. Now this is this is Biden when he's saying, well, I'm gonna send a billion dollars to Africa for humanitarian aid or whatever. Let's watch that video. You know, that's the right thing for the wealthiest nation in the world to do. And today I'm announcing over $1 billion of new humanitarian support for Africans displaced from homes by historic droughts and food insecurity. We know African leaders and citizens are seeking more than just aid. You seek investment. So the United States is expanding our relationship all across Africa, from assistance to aid, to investment to trade, moving from patrons to partners, to help bridge the infrastructure gap. I was told, by the way, when I got elected, I could never get an infrastructure bill passed. Are you outraged? People in North Carolina are suffering, man. I understand the Democrats hate the United States, and they certainly hate the people of North Carolina. I am, which, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm getting, getting so damn angry. 
you know, the thing that, that blows my mind, you know North Carolina is more like a purplish type of state. I mean, Trump almost lost North Carolina because so many people voted Democrat and here the Democrats won't even help the people of North Carolina. Do, do Democrats make sense to you? Why are people voting Democrat in North Carolina? Somebody riddle me that, Batman. Oh my God. I mean, there's so many stories to talk about today. Uh, man, I, well, hey, I figured out what happened to the mics on the last uh, video. <laughs> was, uh, I, uh, I, the mic's not working. My external mic's not working. So this is actually using the phone mic. So I hope the sound's gonna be okay on this video. I, uh, I'm using the Pro. By the way, if you do this, uh, if you use the Pro version of the video, you can uh, adjust the mics to be forward, omni, or back. Uh, rear, actually, is what they call it. So I'm using the rear mic. So we'll see how this turns out. I've never done this before. So, and that's why the my mug is a little bit bigger because I can't, I can't, I gotta keep the camera closer to me so that you can, uh, hopefully, uh, the sound is working on this thing. Anyway, good God, we got so many stories to get into. You know, the first, before I get into the news, well, we've already covered a little bit there in the front. I wanted to thank everybody on uh, on YouTube. You know, all 411 of you. That's, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, you stuck with me. And, you know, I'm so censored on YouTube. You know, it's that cybersecurity guy. It's not, see, I'm not that cyber sec guy uh, on, on X. All right, but I just want you to know that when you leave comments on YouTube, I don't get the comments. YouTube censors most all of my comments. Just like they, they you know, they bury the, the videos. You can't even hardly find that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. But we are hitting the big time somewhat, uh, just so you know. I mean, you know, it's been tough. I mean, back in 2000, before they took down Parler, I had 56,000 followers. You know, and I don't do this for followers, and I don't care how many people watch my videos. I know the people that do. I'm trying to help you out. That's why I make these videos. It's not about, I don't make no money. Zero, zip, zipola. Okay, I mean, if, if, at first the videos were about getting Trump elected, and then, uh, and you know, that, and, I, and I was hoping to do that by persuasion and by giving you information and trying to help you. Anyway, so I just wanted you to know, and of course on Rumble, I am the burn on Rumble. That's where the videos are. And uh, we're getting a few people there. But anyway, I did, did want to let you know, we've kind of gone big time on X. I had a video, last I looked, it had 50,000 impressions. Now, I don't know if that means that 50,000 people watched it. <laughs> it, was, it was the last video, if, you, if, if, you, if you're on YouTube, you know, check it out. It's that little three minute video. I was doing a satire, you know, on Hunter Biden. I mean, are you outraged? They impeached Trump for asking a question about Ukraine, you know, saying, hey, you know, were there some shenanigans that were going on over there? Can you just look into it and let me know? And then they impeached Trump over that. And if you watch that three minute clip, they went on and on. Well, Biden will never pardon his son. Biden will never pardon Hunter Biden. Biden will never pardon her. I mean, so, you know, I think that video speaks for itself. And it's not the fact that he pardoned him. It's that he lied about it the whole time. And then what, what blows my mind about Democrats, let's just get back on Democrats for just a minute. Oh my God, they're freaking meat puppets, aren't they? They are all meat puppets. Anyway, so the pardon went all the way back I want to say 11 years. Some people are saying 10 years, but it went back to when Hunter Biden was up to his shenanigans with Burisma, the most corrupt company in Ukraine at that time. Hell, I don't even know if Burisma is still around. I guess it is. I don't know. But I mean, so, so now we'll never know what the hell the Bidens were up to in Ukraine other than making a lot of money. And, and you would think that a Democrat would go, well, you know, that Hunter Biden laptop wasn't real. Or was it? Hmm. 
according to a Democrat now, because they're a meat puppet and all they listen to is mainstream media or legacy media now, you know, they still think the laptop wasn't real. Or, you know, but you would think, okay, so now, you know, use your common sense. If you're going to put a pardon up all the way back to 2014, I mean, just common sense says that, okay, something was going on back then that, <laughs> that he needed to be pardoned for. Right? But um, a Democrat can't put two and two together. Oh, all right, enough on that. We got a hell of a lot of news to get into. Holy moly, there's so much crap going on. Uh, I, you know, the first topic I just kind of wanted to talk about, because I wanted you to think about things just a little bit. And that's uh, Trump. By the way, Trump's talking about going over to uh, to the cathedral there in France. Uh, and he, you know, for the dedication, I don't know if you knew, they burnt down a while back. It's a big church. It was an old church. Uh, I never got the circumstances of why it burnt down. If you know, leave me a comment. I mean, I, I don't know if that was arson or an accident or what. But anyway, so Trump's going to go over there. But I'm a bit concerned about that. All it takes is one sidewinder missile to take out Trump's plane. I don't think he's safe in Europe. Do you? I mean, I, I know he, you know, he's been invited by Macron. Perhaps that's a globalist setup. You know, Macron is a globalist. I, you know, am I the only one who just thinks about these things? But anyway, I wanted to talk about Trump for just a minute. I mean, I want you to realize, I mean, the guy, I mean, he's amazing. He's amazing. I mean, think about it. He he won the 2016 against all odds, all right. And then of course he was impeached twice, and he littered his uh, his uh, uh, cabinet with bad bad people that were recommended by a bunch of rhinos, you know. But he didn't know any better. He was just a businessman when you think about it. And uh, man, they fought him tooth and nail the whole way through his first year, four years in office. But now, you know, he's coming in eyes wide open. But anyway, and even, th so think about this comeback. When he left uh, back in 2020, his entire cabinet resigned. Because uh, they were, I guess, they thought January 6th was a real insurrection. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you come to that conclusion. I knew, at, at my last post on Parler said this was a setup. Yeah, isn't it amazing how I knew all the way back then? You know, I go, I mean, someday maybe uh, I, I'll get my old post from Parler. Uh, by the way, speaking of Parler, somebody tell me what's going on there. I don't know. I mean, I'm posting on Parler, but it seems like it's a it's a dead animal for some reason. I mean, I, I don't know if uh, anybody's, because uh, I never get any comments. Uh, it's it's It doesn't show up very well on my computer screen because the, the graphics are all messed up. But anyway, it's, it's kind of out of nostalgia that I post on Parler. Uh, you know, I think it's that cyber security guy on parlor or that cyber sick guy. I'm not sure which Like I said, I just post there and pretty much ignore it. Everything I do now is on X But anyway So I, I was talking about Trump. So here he was I mean zero. I mean people really believe that insurrection bullcrap and uh, he was a he was a really hated person You know, but he, he brought everything back and think about it, when uh, when the primaries started uh, for the Republican nomination, DeSantis was up, I don't know, I think I want to say 15 points or something. I mean, everybody thought DeSantis was going to be winning the primaries. But somehow Trump brought himself back. You know, my God, he was doing two rallies a day and everything else. And somehow he won over the American people. And then, of course, he was uh, almost assassinated twice. You know, I mean, that iconic photo of him jumping up going, fight, fight, fight. Who the hell does that? <laughs> you know, that's after you've been shot. I mean, you know, oh my God. And then, of course, the second attempt on his life, you know, I, I was thinking, man, you know, he might, he might just uh, throw in the towel. He never did. He kept going and going. I mean, I tell you what, that guy has got some stamina. He might be in his 70s, but I tell you. That's amazing. Anyway, that's enough on Trump. I just wanted you to kind of think about things. I mean, who the hell takes the abuse that he's taken? Oh, yeah, and of course we got the litigation. My God, they, they, they trumped him up on charges and said he committed 34 felonies, and the, and the Democrats believe that shit because they're meat puppets. They don't, they don't understand that was all a setup. 
you know, or any of the other cases. I mean, what was there, like four cases against Trump that he had to fight? And, you know, that's a that's a pain in the ass. You know, he's got to travel to New York and sit there and listen to that merchant, whatever that judge was. I mean, what a freaking idiot that guy was. Oh, my God. But he kept with it. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's get back to the news. Uh, all right, so let's see. Oh, yeah, Syria. So uh, we got some some new news on Syria. Uh, the uh, the terrorists. Uh, I, I, mean, I have I have to believe that. I haven't seen anything to say that these are rebels. From what I understand, these are ISIS and Al Qaeda. But anyway, they have been stopped. They did take Aleppo in the last video I, I put up. Uh, I said they taken half of Aleppo, but they took the whole city. Uh, but what's happened is and. I don't think uh, uh, other people are reporting on this, but uh, what is it, Iran, Iraq, uh, Russia, and I think China to a certain degree have, have all come in uh, with um, uh, the president of Assad. Thank God, okay. I'll tell you, sometimes my brain don't function. Assad, they've all come in on his side, and the, uh, the, 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 in, the invasion has been stopped completely. And in fact, I imagine it's going to turn back. There was a, some really graphic uh, um, videos of uh, when Russia bombed a lot of those uh, uh, terrorists. And man, they killed a whole bunch of them. So when, and when you got it, and by the way, Iran, from what I understand, is sending troops. Uh, so they, they put, really putting their skin in the game. So, and I'm, I don't know what's happening. From last I heard, Hezbollah was sending troops. Uh, I wonder if uh, Yemen, I haven't heard anything about Yemen, but I mean, I'm just speculating here that, you know, if, if Iran and Hezbollah are, or, and I don't know, I, I don't think Hezbollah is doing a whole lot, but still, so there's a lot of people that are going to be going up, and that was only 15,000 strong, that's that's the number that I've been given, and I, well, they're a lot less now, <laughs> now that the Russians bombed the hell out of them, you know, I, that, that's another thing, I mean, we got to talk about, okay, you know, the, one of the problems in Ukraine has been no air support. Well, these guys have no air support. I don't think that Israeli planes are coming in there and, and bombing uh, or fighting with the Russians. So with no air support and only 15,000 to start with, even though they were heavily armed and they had all the latest NATO equipment, I don't think that, uh, I think that thing's gonna be put down here pretty quick. I could be wrong. I thought the same thing about Ukraine and. Boy, was I wrong there. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, but anyway, that's a lot of opposition. A lot of people. On, uh, and of course, you've still got the Syrian uh, army. Uh, and they're there. So anyway, just saying. Uh, that's enough on Syria. Um, uh, there we go. Oh, the a uh, little bit on Ukraine here. Russians are very close to taking or, or getting into taking uh, Petrovsk. Let me, uh, I've got it up above the spelling there. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but Petrovsk is a, is a major uh, logistics hub for the Ukrainians in the Donbass. And uh, if that falls, I mean, I, you know, the, things are proceeding rapidly. The other uh, piece of information was uh, uh, Zelensky told the troops in Kirsch to hold on until uh, Trump is inaugurated. Uh, I guess I don't know why. Uh, whatever. Uh, and they're there. I, I, from what I understand, the conditions are really bad for them. And uh, and they they're like, well, why? Why why are we sacrificing ourselves up here in Kirsch for, for whatever? What just so that you know uh, we can hold on till January 20th? Uh, on that note, the Pentagon has put together. I wish if I could find the list of of weapons. Uh, we're sending even more of our weapons. The Democrats are, once again, America last. That's a Democrat philosophy. They hate America. But anyway, we're sending another 600 million, I think, in arms or weapons to uh, to Ukraine. And then Schultz, uh, he he got on a plane and flew to Kiev, and he's promising 600 million in weapons. By the way, he did not, uh, he's not gonna give them the long range uh, missiles. What are the Taurus? I think that's what they're called. So that's at least that's a good thing. I, but what other weapons has Germany got? I mean, you know what? I, I never. You always got to look at the bright side of things. 
I was always worried that the Democrats were going to declare martial law and use the military against the American people. Uh, and I still might, you know, I mean, we still got till January the 20th. But, the, you know, the good news was is that we've depleted our military so much that I, and of course, Americans, you know, with the Second Amendment, we all have guns and a lot of military, I'm going to tell you, I, I've seen hand grenades in people's houses, <laughs> you know, ex-military, you know, or veterans. Uh, they, uh, they've managed to take, take home some, in fact, I saw a torpedo one time in a veteran's basement. I was going, what the hell is your dad going to do with a torpedo? He just wanted it. <laughs> I was like, that was a girl I was dating way back, way back when. I won't use no names on that one. Uh, anyway, so, uh, but, but yeah, so, you know, the American people pretty heavily armed. And so the military, they got nothing left. Uh, so now we got to bounce because the military kind of popped into my head. We got to bounce over to South Korea. South Korea president declared martial law. Uh, I, why? I don't know. I guess that the, uh, maybe they were going to do a, a snap election on him or her. I can't, I don't, can't remember who the hell the president of South Korea is. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll put the name up above. I'll get it on my computer. Anyway, uh, and so just prior to because i was going to talk about all of this you know prior to making this video and then all of a sudden on the radio they said that he's lifted martial law <laughs> and they by the way they, the military did surround the parliament so it was going to be a coup and he was going to be a di dictator uh, i don't know what happened somebody somewhere put a stop to it and so martial law has been rescinded in south korea you know but and here's another riddle me that batman you know, we've got, I want to say, somewhere around 30,000 troops in Korea. For what? I mean, do you think North Korea is going to invade South Korea? They, in fact, North Korea blew up all the bridges between them and South Korea and told South Korea, you do you, we'll do us. You know, and now they've cozied up to uh, Russia with a treaty, and they're trading with uh, China and all of the BRICS nations. So North Korea, they don't need South Korea. They don't want South Korea. And in fact, because they blew up all the bridges, tells you that, you know, they it, you could need those bridges if you're going to invade the South, right? So, I mean, right now, there's no threat. Bring them damn 30,000 troops home and let's save the damn money, right? But you know why they're there? It's really to, to threaten China. I, I tell you, I don't understand the empire. You know, here we are going broke. And by the way, that's another topic. Uh, let's watch a, a video by Colonel McGregor on inflation. Let's, let's watch that now. He said the people in the United States that earn less than $50,000 a year, and you'd be surprised how large that population is in the United States right now. Uh, they have been suffering for some time, the consequences of inflation and malpractice in Washington, but now, the pain that they have been enduring is migrating upwards into the uh, upper middle class and even to those who are now millionaires. In other words, <clears throat> the, the dramatic rise in the price of food, 21%. You know, the, the dramatic rise in mortgage rates to 7%. The, the rise in rents, the rise in uh, car uh, loans being forfeited and, and cars being, uh, you know, retaken by the, by the owners, the dealers. All of this is coming together in a very bad way, <clears throat> but nobody in, during these conventions seemed to be remotely cognizant of it. And they made promises to everybody, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a better life, low inflation, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> everything will be cheaper in the, in the future than it is today. Of course, how do you do that? The president can't wave a magic wand and ensure that everybody does exactly what he wants. That's, that's nonsense. And there are forces that really aren't in our control economically. <clears throat> and so this business of migrating upwards means that the pain, the economic pain, is being felt more broadly than just at the lower end of the spectrum. This also signals a, this, this imminent decline of the United States in terms of economic prosperity and standard of living. Now, you put that together with this bellicose foreign policy that has tried desperately to start a war with Russia over the last uh, two and a half years. You add to it now the determination in Israel and with Mr. Netanyahu to start a major regional war in the Middle East. 
And you see that in response to his demands, we've moved more than half the United States Navy over there, along with a substantial portion, if not most, of the United States Air Force's capabilities. All right. And I know I'm bouncing around on tangents, but I mean, the reason I wanted to throw that up was because um, Elon Musk is posting all over X that we're going broke. Broke, broke, broke. And I, you know, I already told you it's mathematically uh, 100% that the dollar is going to be worth zero before long. So, you know, I, I don't see, and we're going to send another billion to Africa. I mean, I, I tell you, they, this, these people are out of their freaking minds. And you're going to try to set up a World War III before you get into office, the Democrats are, the warmongering Democrats, the warmongering Democrats. I can't say that enough times, can I? All right, so let's see. Talked about Kirsch, martial law. Yeah, Erdogan, you know, those troops came from Turkey. But Erdogan saying, no, Turkey has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I mean, guy, he talks out of both sides of his mouth, doesn't he? Oh, my God, what a lying bastard. But, you know, one of the reasons, you, you, then you say, well, why isn't Russia, why does Russia even put, tolerate Turkey? Because all they do is lie, lie, lie. Well, uh, Alex, I have, I have to take, give him credit on the Duran. He was pointing out that Turkey controls the Black Sea. And uh, they're not allowing NATO ships to enter the Black Sea, so it's kind of a, you know, that right now, until the war's over in Ukraine, Russia has to give Turkey a little bit of uh, uh, love, I guess you could say. So that was, you know, because I was wondering, I was going like, why in the hell is, does Russia put up with Turkey, you know, or Erdogan, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, he just visited Russia right before they, they launched all them troops into um, Syria. So, I mean, good God crazy and then of course uh, oh yeah Wagner's also on their way to Syria from what I understand <clears throat> the uh, this is another crazy st I told you there's a lot of shit to talk about <laughs> my god so France uh, my, the minor minority government uh, appears to be in its final hours uh, as opposition lawmakers from the left and far right vowed to topple Prime Minister Michael Great Barn Barniers, you know, I never heard of the guy, but uh, he, Barniers cabinet. A no confidence vote is scheduled Wednesday in Parliament in the wake of a divisive budget debate, with the strong chance of being if it, it being successful. If the motion passes, Barniers cabinet will be the shortest-lived government in France's modern history, making an unprecedented period of political instability. President Emmanuel Macron will be in charge of appointing a new uh, prime minister. So some people were questioning, okay, so if the government is all messed up, will Macron, you know, because his term, I think he's got till 2028 20, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's 26. But uh, people are speculating. He, well, you know, wonder if he's going to resign. I don't think he will personally, but, you know, who knows? But with the government that messed up, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So uh, this was uh, I one, just getting on to a totally different topic. Uh, this was uh, Robert Kennedy, and uh, I just thought this was a cool video, and he's talking about the flu shot. <laughs> I mean, you know, now you know he's against the mRNA uh, uh, coof. Uh, the M I'll go just go ahead and say it. The M mRNA vaccines. He's against those, all right? That, that just got me uh, penalized on YouTube, I'm sure. But anyway, so uh, this is Robert Kennedy talking about the flu shot. In a million years, I would not take the flu shot. And I'll tell you why. Because this is what Cochrane and BMJ have found. People who take the flu shot are protected against that strain of flu. Uh, they're 4.4 times more likely to get a non-flu infection. And you might find, and a lot of people do, that they get the flu shot and then they get sick. They're usually not getting the flu. They're getting something that is indistinguishable from the flu because the flu shot gives you something called pathogenic priming. It, it, it injures your immune system so that you're more likely to get a non-flu viral upper respiratory infection. In fact, 
the Pentagon published a story, and you can cite this, it's by Wolf, W-O-L-F-E, in January of this year, in which they said the flu shot not only primes you for flu, but it primes you for coronavirus. If you get, they gave flu, they had a placebo group, and they had a, a vaccine group because they wanted for many military readiness to see if the flu shot was prophylactic against coronavirus. What they found is actually the people who got the flu shot were 36% more likely to get coronavirus. And that's not a, that's not a lone study. We found six other major studies that say the same thing. If you get the flu shot, you're more likely to get coronavirus. You know, we're the, look, all you have to do, Alan, and this is what Cochrane said, is look what's happened to longevity in the elderly since we started mandating the flu shot to elderly people. Those are the people, who, their, their life expectancy has dramatically gone down as the flu shot proliferated. And if you see, you know, the people who died during the COVID vaccinate, during the COVID crisis, many, and there's no science on this, but it's observational, it tended to be people who got their flu shots, people who were in nursing home who will all get flu shots, people who are first responders who get so flu shots. All- I don't understand the implications of your position. If, if you're right, why wouldn't it follow that the flu shot should be illegal? You said it's criminal to mandate the flu shot because it kills people in my age category. So if you had to cast the deciding vote, if you had decided to run for Congress instead of doing the great work you've done over so many years, and you were the deciding vote in the United States Senate, and there was a bill to outlaw the flu shot, wouldn't, why wouldn't you vote for it if you, you know, think? I'm kind, of, I'm, like, I'm, I'm kind of a free market guy. And I think, you know, what I'm against mandates. I okay. think that, you know, there may be situations where, you know, that, where that product might do some good for somebody. But I don't, I just don't believe it should be mandated. I don't, you know, I wouldn't think, for example, that a, um, that uh, Viagra, should be mandated to every human being on the planet, right? But there may be somebody who says, you know, I want to take that medication, let them do it. But I'm you not, and I, but let's not order everybody to do it. Well, that, that was interesting, wasn't it? And, uh, you know, on that same theme, uh, you know, Bill Gates, huge supporter of... Uh, of all kinds of questionable stuff, <laughs> medically speaking, uh, vaccines and whatnot. But many people think he's trying to depopulate the world. I, I think that, uh, with you know, with all of his shenanigans, buying up farmland here in the United States. It, as far as I know, I don't think that farmland's even being farmed. He's trying to starve the United States, from what, from what I can tell, or or plant uh, gen- genetically modified foods on all that land. Who knows? You tell me. What's going on with all that farmland that Bill Gates owns? I haven't heard anything, nothing, no stories about it. But anyway, this is Bill Gates' car getting pummeled in Great Britain because people are catching on to the fact that he's a globalist lunatic. And uh, I just enjoyed watching this. Watch it. So that was that was that video, and then continuing on the same thing, <laughs> I find all these little tidbits, and I'm like, oh man, that that's a great story, you know. Uh, but then we get Joe Rogan on his show talking about excess deaths and how that's uh, that's happening all all over the world right now. 
Wonder why? <laughs> I can't say why. You you form your own opinion on that. But anyway, so uh, but this is uh, Joe Rogan talking about that. Let's watch that video. It is overall life expectancy. Yes. That might be the craziest statistic in the world right now. You've seen this, right? Yes. Since 1930, of course, it goes this way, this way, this way, this way, because you fucking live longer because fucking technology and medicine. And then 2020 it levels, and then it starts to go down. It's down two and a half years since 2020, which is unheard of. Yeah. Unprecedented. What could that possibly be from? I don't know, Tony. Weird. So strange. It's not like there was a, a gigantic medical intervention that was forced upon the population during that time period. Again and again. Booster and booster and booster. <laughs> And you're not allowed to say, or you're a conspiracy theorist. I guess I. People are, they're in a fucking trance because being on the side of reality and facts is so against the narrative that the liberals were correct that they're willing to ignore excess deaths. They were willing to ignore an increase in all cause mortality. That's shocking. Yeah. They're willing to ignore it. And they're the trust the science people, but only they're, only the winning, it, it leans to their favor. Dude, the I science stumbled. says there's something terrible there. Okay, so that was Rogan on excess deaths. Now, there's another person that you definitely got to tune into. Way back when the cough first, or the China virus came across, I was watching uh, Dr. John Campbell. I, I, somehow he, he, he manages to stay on YouTube and just, he, he, I guess he knows the rules backwards and forwards. <laughs> and he's, he's able to talk about things that, when I talk about him, I get a strike, you know. But uh, he, but he, definitely follow him if you want to learn about excess deaths and the COOF and the vaccines and all of that stuff. He's, but I was watching him back in 2000 and man, he kept me so informed on what was really happening with the, uh, the whole, uh, the whole pandemic, uh, okay, blow by blow. He was amazing. Definitely check him out. I, and he's also on Rumble now, so you can check him out there. Uh, this is uh, this is another story. <laughs> like like I told you, we got a lot to cover in this video, huh? Oh my God. Uh, this is uh, Georgia, and I can't pronounce. I'm gonna just put the name up above, but I'll just give you the first name. Salome Salumi Salome. Uh, and then the, that last name, you can you can read it up above. Uh, French president of Georgia is uh, stoking the protest. Now, that's what the uh, the opposition is saying, that these are all uh, CIA-operated NGOs that are doing uh, all of these protests in Georgia. Now, these, these, these two clips that I'm going to show you, they did happen within the last couple of days, so they're somewhat dated, but I just want to kind of get let you get a feel of what's going on in Georgia right now. If you're not familiar, Georgia is a country <laughs> below Russia, right right on the border of Russia. Uh, and a lot of people in Georgia speak Russian. All right, let's watch those clips.
right, so that's what's going in, on in Georgia. But let's talk about this president. Now, she's French-born. I don't understand how a French-born president is, is in charge of, of Georgia. But uh, French-born Georgian politician and former diplomat currently serving as the fifth president of Georgia in office since 20, December 2018. She is the nation's first female president, a position that she will occupy for the term of six years. As a result of Georgia's, uh, let's see, as a result of constitutional changes coming into effect in 2024, last name there, is expected to be uh, Georgia's last popularly elected president. Future heads of states are to be elected indirectly by a parliamentary college of electors. So that was, uh, that was interesting. Okay, so we already talked about Schultz. Boy, uh, I, we're gonna, let's just keep going here. I wanted to talk about movies for just a minute. I, you know, I, I, when I'm not making these videos and not watching geopolitics and trying to learn what I'm gonna put in my next video, I, you know, I, I'll, I'd love to tune out and watch movies, especially the Chinese movies now. They are, are, are Japanese also. Uh, they are really good, man. Of course, the, the, everything is dubbed in English, but I mean, it just looks like they're speaking English as far as, far as I can tell. But anyway, they are, they are really great. But what I'm noticing is it's all females. <laughs> you, you can't get a good, you know, uh, knock, knock them, sock them video with a guy. Or, or the guys are always bad, bad dudes, you know, and the women are kicking the shit out of the guys. You know, what happened to James Bond, man? <laughs> I mean, what happened to when the guy was, you know, had a girl on each arm and, uh, uh, you know, was uh, uh, the spy who loved me? I mean, all the, all the old, I mean, you, there's no guys anymore that, that are like, you know, the big actor. You know, well, you got uh, Red One, you know, with... Um, uh, the Rock, you know, he's been in a lot of movies as a, as a figurehead. But I mean, just think about it. Every movie I go to, it's always women. I mean, I, I guess it's this. Uh, that's what Hollywood seems to want to depict. You know, I don't, I, I don't understand it. You tell me. What, what do you think? Are you watching some movies from time to time? Uh, especially the, the ones that I enjoy. The, the, the ones where the, everybody's kicking up. So I think we've covered everything in the news that I wanted to cover. Can you believe it? <laughs> oh my God. I wonder how long this video is going to be. All right, that's it. Uh, if I think of something else, we'll tack on another clip or two. Peace out. <laughs> no one is above the law. No one is above the law. Nobody is above the law. No one is above the law. No one is above the law. Nobody is above the law. No one 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 is above the law. Son of a bitch.